What is your most disturbing secret? You slash I heart diet coke responded. I have a good friend who is a very shy pooper. Like, we've been on trips together and he won't shit for days, he says he just can't relax and go because he's in public. But one time in college, about six years ago, he was super drunk and fell asleep shitting on my toilet. And the shit got all over my toilet, not sure how, but most of it did not go in the bowl. I got him up, cleaned him and the toilet up, and put him to bed. He was blackout drunk and doesn't remember it at all. I don't have the heart to tell him. He'd be mortified. It wouldn't do anyone any good. But when he's shy about pooping around me, I can't help but chuckle at the irony. You slash Gurnapi responded. When I was around seven years old, I was sexually exploited and had my toddler photos sold to pedophiles by a maid we hired. One afternoon, right after taking a bath I wanted to turn our PC on, but as a child I was afraid of plugs due to the electricity. So I asked her kindly to plug it in for me. But the maid then told me I should first pose for a photo in the bed otherwise she wouldn't do it. So, I went to my bed and posed. I had a giant stuffed teddy bear at the time so Elle covered my bare body because I somehow knew it was wrong. Then she told me to take the teddy bear off. She had also taken photos of my baby brother. The other maids carefully observed her and eventually told my parents. I watched her cry and beg on her knees, kissing my parents' foot. Explaining it was a joke as a kid, I honestly was laughing. The police further investigated and found out she had been making a fortune off of the photos she takes of children she was hired to care for. Including me. I've never told anyone even on Reddit because I'm afraid no one will listen, but here I am. You slash Misty Lakes responded. My ex-husband told me one time that he didn't think it was wrong for a father to be sexually intimate with his daughter, as long as she was old enough. No one will ever know why we truly divorced, because I don't think anyone would believe me. He started talking about children. I'd never let my daughter be his. You slash Deso Saeed responded. My family think I finished the computer science degree, but I dropped out. However I've been working in the sector for about 25 years in a row without any trouble and people, employers and colleagues, seem to think that I'm quite competent. It's not disturbing per se, but for my parents it was a big deal that I finished my studies. My dad passed away three years ago without knowing. My mom is 83, and she is still proud of me, and I hope things stay the same till she dies. You slash Ford replied to this comment to say. It does not matter man. You're successful, and I assume respected by your peers. Let the past stay in the past. If you brought this up to your mom I can 99% guarantee you she would not care, and maybe even tear up, because of the openness and honesty. But really, just let it go. That was a long time ago, and it was only something that was meant to be a step towards where you have already gotten to. You slash Icosoc responded. When I was a little kid, either five or six years old, I had gotten in trouble for throwing a TV remote at my sister. My dad is a very large and intimidating man. He stood in the doorway of my room yelling at me. I was hysterical. He was getting angrier and angrier. He started yelling at me to take my clothes off. I took my shirt off. He told me to take my pants off too. And my underwear. I'm in the corner of my room crying, hysterical, afraid, and naked, staring up at this giant, angry, red-faced man. I stood there like that for a moment, when suddenly his anger instantly left his face, making way for shame. He dropped to one knee in the doorway and put his head in his hands and cried to himself, saying, what am I doing? I'm a bad father. I walked over to him, still naked and crying, and said, you're not a bad dad. I hugged him. He left. I don't know if he thinks I forgot about that day, or what, but I remember it vividly. This was over 30 years ago asterisk asterisk we've never talked about it. You slash Spencer Tran responded. As a teen, I caught my parents' house on fire playing with pyrotechnics in the garage, and then staged it to look like an electrical fire so I wouldn't get in trouble. I was regarded as the hero who put the fire out before it consumed the house, I was home alone at the time, but really, I was the cause. They had all of the electrical redone in the house as a precaution against another fire. I never came clean. You slash dry communication 901 responded. A few years ago, I used to work at Home Depot at the returns desk. It was mostly very elderly people who worked alongside me in our store. I was the youngest in the team. We had a lady, Margaret, who had issues with bowel control due to her medications. She used to fart without even realizing she's farting. Usually loud, but harmless ones even when she was having a normal conversation. So we got so used to her doing that, even though it was awkward in the beginning. One day we were having a team huddle and it started to smell like fresh manure, such a strong stench. 
and then one more with different flavor this time. The manager dismissed the team huddle, and one of the team members murmured. My God, Margaret, what was that? It was me. I did that Margaret, I'm sorry. You slash to underscore no zero four zero two responded. I never had a GF, but told everyone I did have one and that she broke up with me. I was so good at lying about it that I myself believed my lie, and somehow I felt really sad and depressed. Then I even remembered memories I never had and afterwards I was like WTF am I doing? Edit, thanks guys. The responses are really either hilarious or sympathetic. I am happy to tell that I got rid of that habit some time ago. I am now doing well albeit single, but what do you know? Sometimes single life seems not so bad to me. Anyway thanks for the responses. This was my first post getting so many responses. You slash common underscore C underscore 1426 responded. About a year ago my grandfather called me and wanted to talk. He was an old man and I don't like talking over the phone so it always feels more like a chore than a thing I should do. I put it aside and didn't call him back, moved to the back of my brain. Three days later I got a call from my dad. He told me that my grandfather had passed away. I hadn't called him back. He's done everything he could to make sure me and my brother have a good life and a good future. He's always been so supportive. I never gave him the respect he deserved. I never understood his sacrifice. He didn't have a lot going on for him in the end and hearing from me and my brother was a big part of his life. I didn't call him back that day and I can't forgive myself for it. My entire family is pretty abusive except my cousin. My grandfather was a great man and he was never abusive. I wish I had called him back. I should never have ignored him. He died a year ago, when I was 13 in January. I'm now 14, almost 15, and I can't forgive myself and I don't think I should. You slash masked underscore Daisy responded. People in my personal life who find out I'm a professional dom instantly feel free about telling me their darkest secrets. I know who's secretly gay. I know who's on steroids. I know who's kinky. I know who has erectile dysfunction. I know both men and women who were brutally sad as children. I even know someone who's killed a guy. He wasn't boasting or bragging. He seemed really shook up about it. I might be the only one he's told. So, my most disturbing secret is that I'm a trauma sponge for absorbing everyone else's disturbing secrets. You slash Dana Vendetta XO responded. Not a secret necessarily, but my labia tore in two spots near my clit when I gave birth to my son. I had him at home, and my son's dad is and was verbally, mentally, and emotionally abusive. I had no support or help, so the stitches didn't hold. I was 22 at the time and obviously self-conscious of my vagina already, as most women are, and my ex tormented me by telling me things like my pussy was mangled and ugly. I was in survival mode for so long. It wrecked my self-esteem. Edited to add, holy banana pancakes, you guys. I have tried many times to write this shit out, and I always end up deleting it. But today, for some reason, it just stuck to share, and the outpouring of love and support and kindness has been overwhelming, unexpected, and beyond appreciated. Oh, and he is definitely an EX. You slash low underscore satisfaction underscore 512 responded. I secretly wish my parents would get divorced. They don't have a horrible relationship per se, but I just think my mom would thrive better without him. They've been married for almost 30 years and subscribe way too much to the you gotta stick it out school of thought so it's never gonna happen. I don't hate my dad, I just don't think he contributes much as a husband and as I grow older I think it more and more and feel bad she's stuck with an expert of textbook weaponized incompetence and admittedly low level but still constant gaslighting. You slash mixed underscore galaxies responded. A newly discovered younger relative is trying to connect with my family after researching his background through an ancestry site. He tried to find us when his mom always avoided the topic of his biological dad. No one knew about this except recently from my parents, two of my older sisters, and me. Apparently, this was his second attempt to connect with my family, but was having a hard time thinking it's because of him coming out to them as gay. We tried to help his find his father and asked around about him to other family members. Found out this relative was known about from other close relatives, aunts, uncles, grandparents, etc., but was never mentioned because he was the result of rape by one of my uncles. They swept it under the rug to cover my uncle, never told the kid who his father was and what he did, and distanced themselves from him. We, on the other hand, do connect with him every once in a while and hang out with him. I don't know if anyone told him that we know who and where his father is, but we have confirmed that we probably have seen him a few times at family gatherings, but that's about it. You slash casual underscore schizo responded. When my schizophrenia was first developing, it was a very hard time. I used to take off and take bike rides to try and clear the fog and whispers in my head, 
which rarely worked. While I rode, I listened to music. Eventually, it got so bad that I found myself playing roulette with the songs and walking the little wall over the canal. I decided that if one of the songs I had chosen came on when I hit shuffle, I would jump and UN alive myself. They never did, and eventually, I got help, and things have been going a bit better with the right medication. Sometimes, on really hard days, I still bring up that same playlist and just hit shuffle and cry. You slash Captain McCowdy 92 responded. I tried to kill myself last year, after hitting a super low point in my life, with a razor knife, sat in my car, and wanted to talk to my brother one last time, but it was super late so he didn't answer left him a voicemail like everything was fine telling him I loved him. Wanted to talk to someone anyone, so for some reason I called the suicide hotline, talked to this guy David for almost an hour blubbering like a baby. Went back home thankfully, ashamed of myself and burned the letters I wrote to everyone before my wife and kids woke up. Still my lowest and most vulnerable moment. You slash Princess Peachy Day responded. Trigger warning SA I vaguely remember being molested by an older neighbor boy at my grandparents' house. I was around four and he was nine. He had me lay down and pull up my dress. Then he pulled off my panties and touched me saying he was my daddy. He said all daddies inspected their children like that. I was afraid of getting in trouble so I never told anyone. Looking back I now know that he must have been getting abused himself. I feel guilty every day for not telling anyone and possibly saving him. I still have issues with sex 34 years later. I hope he's doing all right and has gotten some help. You slash deleted responded. I think I was witness to the killing of a child younger than me when I was eight years old. I remember I was in after school day care at my elementary school and us kids were hanging around the designated day care room at school waiting for our parents to pick us up. I remember a boy in particular, maybe around five, that would horse around but nothing out of the ordinary for a kid. I remember one of the adults for the day care started playing around with him. I remember he started treating the boy as his own special friend. Us kids were aware of this friendship, but didn't think much about it, adults play with kids all the time is what we believed. Now that I think about it, I think the adult would take the boy to a room to hang out with him during daycare. I don't remember the details exactly, but what I do remember is one day the boy was horsing around, maybe to the point of being violent, and the adult picked him up like he was going to start playing with him, but instead threw him violently against the wall. I remember the moment of impact, the boy's body hitting the wall at full force and hearing the loud thud from the impact, I remember the boy's body falling to the floor, I think I remember the boy's limp body on the ground before the adult picked the boy up in his arms and ran to the hangout room. I remember the adult acting like the boy was okay and was just playing around. I think I remember the adult coming back out of the room threatening us kids to not discuss what we witness. Eventually my dad picked me up, what happened in the aftermath I don't remember. You slash Zipo the superstar responded. For a full middle school school year I was groped by a former friend and classmate. He grabbed my waist during swim practice, I was wearing a tight one piece, he was in swim trunks and pulled me up against him. When I told him to stop he said. Stop what? I'm not touching you. I couldn't yell because the instructor was talking. I cried as I was swimming my next laps. That wasn't the first time he touched me, but it's the first one I remember. I threatened to report him to school admins if he kept it up, but I never reported him. It got to the point where I'd have to run to the school band room to hide from him and he'd still try and chase me in. The next year, I found out he did the same to at least three other girls. I still see him around and he still tries to get close to me. I tried to kill myself when things with him got bad, and I lived in constant fear of him at school. I never told my mom, I didn't want her to see me any differently. To this day, only around four friends IIL know about this. You slash Kat Serenesty EATH responded. Sometimes, when I'm having a really bad mental health day, I imagine killing people that are annoying me in incredibly violent ways. I'd like to clarify that LD never do it. I don't get to decide who lives or dies and I certainly don't get to make that decision because I'm grumpy. But, I've imagined shitty customers being torn apart by machinery, stabbing someone to death with a biro, smashing into people who don't indicate, and feeding bad pet owners to wild animals. It's always oddly realistic in my head, like blood spatter patterns and the smell etc. I used to be an undertaker working coroner's contract. I know what I'm talking about. I reiterate, LD never hurt anybody. I'm more likely to hurt myself than anybody else, if I hurt anyone at all, but for some reason it helps. Just picturing some asshole who refuses to indicate at a roundabout being smashed across their steering wheel, the shattered bones etc. No idea why it helps calm me down, but it does. You slash Frento Alandnone responded. It's not my secret, 
but I know of a person from college who allegedly had an incestuous relationship with their mom that started when they were a teenager. I say allegedly because they only told me this while they were inebriated. When I would ask about what they told me after they sobered up, they would act like nothing happened. But whenever they opened up to me after drinking or smoking, I told them to seek therapy and help because that is statutory rape and incest. They never got the help. We stopped talking after college. To my knowledge they are still living with their mom. You slash Praxios responded. My youngest brother physically assaulted me because I was suspicious that he attempted suicide due to finding pills outside his bedroom. He beat me so viciously I had the worst concussion LV ever had. I had to go to the ER in secret because him and his boyfriend lied to my parents and the cops about what happened. The ER doctor told me I was lucky to be alive because I should have gone straight there after the assault. To this day I still have a dent in my head from it. As a result I ended up becoming homophobic towards him and his boyfriend despite being bisexual myself. I was so hateful towards them and called them slurs that I never imagined would come out of my own mouth. I denied it ever happening, but I still feel guilt about it four years later. It was the one thing I couldn't bring myself to admit to in therapy. Even if it was reactionary abuse, I'm still ashamed of it. You slash unicorn birth responded. I've been SAD so many times in my life, my husband is genuinely the only male I feel safe with, when I have to walk into store by myself I start to shake if literally anyone talks to me, my family never took me seriously and literally blamed me for everything because I'm not ugly and I have a large chest, somehow that made the Ashwaltz my fault. I don't talk to anyone about it because I'm afraid they'll judge me in the same way my family did, I take Zoloft for anxiety and depression, and I can't vent about anything in my life to anyone including my four sisters, because I'm a stay-at-home mom, so I shouldn't complain about anything at all because of my privilege. I would rather much be a normal functioning human being and have a career and everything than have any of my Ashwaltz happen to me at all, I would empty out my bank account. Right now for that opportunity, but no, I struggle constantly with thinking I'm enough for my kids and family, I struggle constantly with my self-image because of what happened to me, it makes me feel so less than. You slash equivalent cover 4030 responded. I was molested by my stepfather, I told my mother about it, and she asked me every day if I was sure. One day, I saw that she had started smoking again because of the stress and was crying herself to sleep every night. Then next day I told her I lied about it, she didn't ask twice, and she took us back home to him. She made me hug him. Years later she admitted that she knew I lied about him being innocent, but she didn't want to leave him, so she didn't ask. She told me she thinks about it every day, and all those years she refused to put me in therapy was so that I didn't tell on him. It drove me to the point of SH which she knew about, and we've talked about it many times, but she does nothing. I love my stepdad, too, he raised me. I'll never admit it to any authorities, I don't want her to go through another divorce, and I'll never tell any other family members, especially my cousins who are like my sisters. They love my stepfather, I've always needed someone to tell about it, but I know I can't. You slash MTV challenge fan responded. I won't share my most disturbing secret on my main account. Instead, I'll share a secret about me that only some people know. I regret my boring life so far. For context, I'm a straight man in my early 30s. I never had the high school girlfriend. I didn't even lose my virginity until I was 26 years old. I only went to one homecoming and it sucked. I never went to my senior prom, never went on the fun spring break trip in high school or college. I never snuck out of my house and did anything rebellious. Never had one of those young, wild and free nights. I never studied abroad and never been able to afford to leave the country. LVE never lived in a big city with roommates as a 20-something. I've taught high school, done many other jobs, traveled around the USA, went to parties, never did anything that fun at parties though, and even played sports. So it's not like LVE never done anything. I'm just very close to my family, was terrified of moving out of my hometown, and I've never had a carefree adventure, and I feel like I'm missing out on life. I know this pales in comparison to others on here, but some teams, I lie awake at night thinking about this, and how I'll never be able to travel back in time. It makes me extremely sad to think about it. You slash OXP responded. I have a long-time girlfriend, a two-year-old kid with said girlfriend, a crippling addiction, all whilst barely making ends meet by working two part-time jobs to make 16 hours worth of minimum wage every week. I am seriously depressed and struggling to find the motivation to even search for better work, as well as considering taking myself to the next stage by starting back in higher education. Life in itself is a massive struggle at the moment, I want to work full-time and will work myself to death so long as I can provide for the two most important people in my life however, finding something that can get me those near impossible. 
Suicide has been contemplated many times, as I just see no point in even trying anymore. Thanks for reading about my struggles. I hope I'm not the only one out here. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this one.